Welcome to the TRG Podcast, everyone. This is the podcast where we discuss all matters of relationships that people are suffering from. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the TRG Podcast. This is episode five. My name is TRG, the relationship guru. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about women in tech. So stay tuned for that. That should be super exciting. So today I want to welcome uh, my good friend, Carolina, call her Carol, <laughs> that is her nickname, to the podcast. Please say hi, Carol. Hi, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much for being here, Carol. <laughs> no, uh, thank we're... you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're, we're super grateful and you're welcome, uh, but we're super grateful for you being here. Uh, it is Friday evening for everyone that is listening. So uh, I know you could be doing a whole bunch of things. So thank you, obviously, for uh, taking one for the team and being here. I'm super excited for this podcast. Anytime. I'm really excited, too. Awesome. Let's jump into it. Uh, Carol, uh, first and foremost, obviously, the topic is about women in tech. Um, so we're going to try to leave names at the door so we don't talk about <laughs> certain companies that we've worked for, obviously, for anonymity reasons. Um, but could you tell us maybe a little bit about your background first? Yeah, for sure. So basically I'm a digital marketing specialist. Uh, I've worked uh, for marketing agencies my whole life, uh, mostly as an account manager and as an account director. Uh, I had about five years of experience on that. I've also recently worked in a tech company, not uh, digital marketing specific specifically, but also tech. So I do have like a very um, good understanding of what being a woman and general tech industry is. So uh, that's a little bit of my background. I studied marketing. I do have a master's degree. Uh, okay. uh, business, so but that's, that's I knew that, but the listeners did not. So, <laughs> For the people yeah. that I know. <laughs> yeah. So that's a little bit of my background. Um, I started in Mexico. I'm originally from Mexico, but um, uh, I got a lot of luck and worked really hard. And now I work here in Vancouver and another tech company. Interesting. So I want to circle back to that at some point. Uh, women of color in tech, uh, because yeah. I think that would be a very interesting kind of segue into things. Um, but I guess um, my first question is, so you're currently working in tech, is that correct? Yes, or I technology am. space? Okay. And were you always interested in this, like since you were a kid or? No, I think honestly, that's like the funny part. I like I started studying marketing and I always saw myself like, oh, I want to go to like an agency. But in my mind, I always thought I was going to end up like in a like a traditional agency. Mm -hmm. uh, I ended up on my first company by luck. Honestly, I, I, I wasn't looking for it. I was just like, I ended up there. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I, I started to get like super interested and in just like researching more, uh, learning more and just like growing up there. But uh, it was just by luck honestly oh wow yeah okay okay then no that's really that's really cool um do you have i mean so you studied obviously and you know you have a master's and everything like that did you foresee yourself doing something else like teaching for example or like was that the aspirations or opening up your own firm like what what do you have kind of in mind for some of your goals i think my goal was always having like my own business um mm -hmm. I, I'm those kind of people that if you ask them like, oh, when do, where do you see yourself like in five, 10 years? I don't really <laughs> have like a really clear goal, but like I always knew that I want to be like in charge of like myself and my own mm -hmm. business basically. Um, thanks to tech industries, I've worked, uh, I've been blessed uh, working with a lot of e-commerce uh, of like literally everything. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like, I want to get there eventually on my life. Um, but uh, haven't figured out yet. <laughs> Honestly, uh, the other thing that I really saw myself and it's a conversation that I had with like some uh, friends as well from like uh, my previous jobs of creating our own agencies because um, we're really smart. <laughs> we really know what yeah. we're doing at the end of the day. And uh, that's, the, that's like the other thing that I always like saw myself and I still do. I think I still do having my own agency eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be interesting interesting um not at the moment i feel like i'm still in the process of like learning a lot um and just working hard you know awesome so eventually you want to really leverage your skills and experience to kind of right. take that to the next level to have some ownership of something and maybe a company or an agency or something like that right? yeah okay no that's yeah, very I think, very cool. I think 
honestly, I would love to like just have my own business and still work on an agency, mm -hmm. even if I don't get to have my own. Just mm -hmm. like kind of do it all, you know? Yeah. Uh, I really like to work and get busy. So that's like the other possibility, having my own business, still working in an agency because I know I can like make a huge impact. And I, I think my knowledge is, uh, is valuable as well. So. Awesome. Do you have a business in mind or a side hustle in mind that you'd like to do? Not really. Okay. I, have, I haven't really thought about it. Okay. That's totally fair. Uh, I'm sure you have you have a ton of time. You're young. Uh, you can yeah. do whatever you want. I know that you have a very solid job and uh, hopefully things are going well. Um, I know you recently changed companies. So yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that transition is going well. Uh, I'm interested to hear, to probably dive in a little bit more about kind of women in tech, like the topic that we were talking about, but I guess women of color in tech uh, and and what your experience has been with that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it's always hard um, mm -hmm. not being uh, just, I, I want to say from North America. Um, mm -hmm. I think um, more about like being a woman of color because like uh, Canada and the U.S. is like they're like a very um, diverse countries uh, mm -hmm. in terms of like race, race for example. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that uh, me being born in Mexico and me having an accent made more impact than the other part, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it was more, I felt like if I, sometimes I would have to lie to some clients, I think, uh, yeah, some clients I had to lie to, like said that I was either from Canada or from the US right. for them to respect me. Um, uh, we had like some instances, uh, incidents where people asked uh, to change because uh, we were in Mexico or we, because we, we were women. And yeah, it's it's really a challenge because it feels like uh, your clients, sometimes they don't take you seriously, but as well, sometimes your your own employers, they don't really take you seriously or they want to, they really challenge you uh, to do a lot, but you don't feel like you're rewarded um, yeah. compared to like your male uh, colleagues and you can see it yeah, at the end of the day and it's, it's really unfair it's really hard and also it kind of feels like we do have to prove ourselves mm -hmm. and guys don't um i feel like guys when and i i've seen it in the hiring process in previous companies um, yeah. that they just expect guys to know everything and they're like yeah whatever and like yeah i feel like even the hiring process it was like really harder for like girls uh, which is kind of funny because at least in, in digital marketing, there's like, I don't know the percentage, but there's like huge percentage of girls working yeah. uh, on that area. And yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's really hard. It's kind of surprising. Um, I really thought um, like coming, I'm, I'm, I'm from Mexico. So there's always like, it, the, the difference is bigger compared to like North America. Of course, in Mexico things are worse, but I, I was kind of expecting to things be totally different. And like everyone being super acceptable and like um this gap between like being female or male didn't matter and it does so it was like uh, it was a, re a little sad to see it and especially being a, a woman of color like woman of not um not from here mm -hmm. uh yeah it's it's been hard it's been a challenge but uh at the same time it makes it like even more rewarding in a sense because you know you really work hard and you you're here Mm -hmm. and, and I think as well, that sense of like people always telling you that you have to prove yourself mm -hmm. makes us work harder and get better results. Um, awesome. Uh, I, I do believe that. Um, most I, of my I, friends, I, sorry. Sorry, I was just going to say not awesome that you went through so many hoops like to, to jump no, through. I, of course, that's not that part's not awesome. But I think that the reward at the end of the tunnel is really awesome. Yeah. Um, and I think you're proof of that. So yeah yeah i believe like yeah at the end of the day yeah it's not nice it's it's hard it, it hurts as well mm -hmm. um I, I wish like things were equally but they're not mm -hmm. uh at the end of the day it, it is what it is uh, i mean i think the important part is like i feel like women in tech we're still fighting and we're doing the best we can to prove everyone wrong and i mm -hmm. think we're doing it and my friends are proof of that as well um mm -hmm. with promotions uh that were like running against like I don't know how many men and they always got it because mm -hmm. at the end of the day they like the results were there right so the it's, spoke it's, for themselves exactly so that's like the 
I think that's like the good part of the, okay. this ugly, ugly side, right? Of being a woman in tech. It's, uh, I do want to circle back to something about the racism stuff. Um, that's always, uh, I, I get very fired up about that. Uh, and you know, you know me, yeah. uh, I get very fired up about that. That really rubs me the wrong way, especially yeah. when a client, uh, prejudges someone based on the color of their skin, their accent, you know, um, really you should be judged on the, your merits, right? Of so, course. um, you the results that you produce, um, because those are, you know black and white so to speak not by of color course. but by transparency you know like yeah. you're gonna be judged by that and that's really what you should be judged by uh whether you're a guy or a girl so that's that's i've seen it you know one too many times uh, in our industry unfortunately yeah. so i'm sorry that you had to deal with that that really sucks i mean I, at the end of the day yes uh, you're the bigger person um you're the one that knows the most uh, on this subject at, at least uh mm -hmm. Um, it is what it is at the end of the day. So, uh, I mean, I personally didn't have an instance that a client asked me to like, oh, I need to switch you. Mm -hmm. But several times they would be like, you can tell that people treat you different or talk to you like you're dumb. I think that was like the part that really hurt because they were like, or like really awful comments. Like, do you understand me? Do you even speak English? Like little stuff that like that I'm like, well, at least I speak more languages than you, you know, like yeah. shut up. <laughs> Yeah, so, you're probably more educated than that person, um, like, and probably. their entire family combined. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know, but, uh, I don't, yeah, and at the end, of, it, it's hard because you, you do have to be professional with them. I think that's, like, yeah. the really hard part. Because um, in, like, in the real world, someone were, were, like, really racist against me. I right. don't think I would react like that. But you have to be professional. You have to, like, deal with it um, the best way you can. And yeah, I mean, it's a little hard, but uh, you cannot do a lot with that. What I do have to say is like in all the companies I've ever worked, yeah, in terms of racism, uh, I hear in, in North America, they don't tolerate that. And I really appreciate that. Yeah, uh, Everyone took action really fast. Um, so that, that's, that's like, a, like a really cool thing that at least you feel like protected in that sense. Yeah, I mean, I think every company is going to operate differently. And uh, obviously, it's a very delicate situation because it's kind of like a he said, she said, or she yeah. said, she said um, circumstance. Um, and accusing someone of that is a very big thing. So you'd need some pretty circumstantial evidence of that. But you also don't want to put your employee in kind of the line of fire, yeah. right? You're not expecting to march them out and be like, okay, your soldiers just march out and take whatever <laughs> they give you and then put a smile on your face. Like <laughs> we're a human at the end of the day, right? Yeah. And really, I think uh, it, it's really sad to me sometimes that um, you being from Mexico is kind of weaponized against you when it should be something that's celebrated in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it, it, it totally is. I think, uh, and that's like what a lot of clients don't understand, uh, that having such a rich culture of like people from different parts of the world is just gonna make, uh, I mean, in our case, your campaign better. Because mm -hmm. there's people with different experiences, different knowledges, and it's just gonna make everything better. Mm -hmm. But uh, people don't see it like that. It's just, uh, yeah, it, it's... it's I don't know. It's it's kind of it's kind of hard, but you yeah. Uh, I guess you you learn how to be the bigger the bigger person. The other thing that is like really upsetting is they make us work harder because uh, we had to like at a certain point we have to like record every single call and like CC everyone in an email just to make sure that people treat you with respect. Right. And it's like why do I have to take the extra step for people to? me we respect like mm -hmm. if you hire this company it's because we are good at what we do mm -hmm. and because we have the best people working here mm -hmm. and um and you didn't find that was the case yeah why are you like always questioning what i know or what i don't know um you mean from the client's perspective or from the, the client's perspective okay. yeah exactly okay but, yeah I feel like sometimes that's a tendency in the service industry, uh, like in general, uh, when people are paying for certain services, they feel like they're just entitled. Like there's a sense of entitlement. If I'm paying you, I should yeah. get X, Y, Z kind of service. 
I remember, uh, like, I used to work in the hotel industry, and you know this, uh, listeners don't, uh, like, way back in the day, and people would do, like, just obscene things. Like, they would use, like, a pillow as their ashtray. Like, yeah, they would be literally smoking in the room, which, number one, is not allowed, at least in in Vancouver and British Columbia, and I guess most places in Canada. And then number two, they would start ashing out their cigarettes on the pillows, and uh, you would confront them about it, and you'd be like, why did you do this? And they'd be like, oh, that wasn't me, that was the previous guest. And you'd be like, these cigarette burns are, like, fresh. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, stuff like that. But they, but in their minds, they're like, hey, I'm paying three or $400 a night for this room. I should yeah. be able to do whatever the freak I want kind of thing, right? Yeah, so. Yeah. But I, I can, think, I think, I think that mentality, sorry, go ahead. No, that I, that, like, I understand where you come from, like, in, in a hotel, like, yeah, it's, it's, so, I'm not saying it's okay for people to do that, but it's just harder when, like, the service that you're offering through knowledge. Yeah. So they do that, those things, not literally, but they, they do those things to you, you know? Right. So it's, it really sucks, but yeah. I mean, it's part of it. Uh, and that order, like, I'm not going to say everything is bad. I've had like amazing clients that are like super excited to work with me. Yeah. Um, that are even like, oh, teach me Spanish and stuff like that. And it's, it's just like the sweetest, the sweetest people ever. And, but did you, I think, I think that's like uh, the amazing thing of working in like this type of industries. You get to like meet a lot of people mm-hmm. with different mentalities and just learn from all of them. Which Interesting. I wanted to ask you, you mentioned something about the hiring process and how you feel like there's been kind of like a double standard, not only just you know, women of, of color, but women in general versus kind of men. Um, do you find that that's been the case through your hiring processes for, you know, the last several companies that you've worked for? Uh, not several, but for some of them, yeah. Um, well, not specifically with me, because um, at mm-hmm. the end of the day, I don't know mm-hmm. uh, what the process is with me, with me for example. Mm-hmm. I I do like good competition, so mm-hmm. I'm good with that. So it's like, it's you against me, the one that is the best. Um, if you ask me to do a task, yeah, here's, here's my task. I just hope mine is the best. But I've seen uh, in my in some of the previous companies that I've worked, I've been part of the hiring process and I could tell um, that at least on the first filters, it would, it would be like harder for girls. Uh, mm-hmm. Like the questions were always harder. Really? Like, very specifically or yeah. Yeah. They're just like assuming that we don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I, it's something that I saw in this specific place and a specific case. And I was just like really, I don't know, it was really disappointing and specifically because the people that I was interviewing, mm-hmm. um, I feel like you can always teach someone about the business, yeah. about digital marketing, about a marketing plan, Facebook ads, all that. You can teach everyone that. I mean, of course you have to have some knowledge, mm-hmm. but the important part is like, uh, if you feel that it's going to be a good person, that it works mm-hmm. well, uh, you know, those things I think are more important and I don't think a lot of people see that like in the hiring process is they just like you just want to see if you know and they're just like harder on you if you're a woman mm-hmm. in a certain way that, i mean that, at least that's what my was my experience um on when i was part of the hiring process um with, okay. Um, okay yeah it, it was it was really extra- uh, strange uh, and do you feel like that was synonymous with your friends that are in the industry as well? Like, did they face a lot of hurdles and hoops when they got hired? Like, different questions? Uh, I don't know if when they got hired, but at least when they got promoted, I think so. Okay. For sure. Um, so, actually, that's probably a great segue to the next topic I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Promotions and growth, I guess, for, for women in tech and, and what you feel like that looks like. It looks... I mean, forgive me, you know, if I got this wrong, but it sounds to me like there is growth potential there. Uh, you just have to maybe work harder for it. Is that correct? There's still like a huge glass ceiling though. It's like, okay. there's like at some point you grow 
but then you cannot keep brewing more because at least in my experience mm -hmm. um like in the last few companies i've worked it's like yeah we have like uh women managers and they do great mm -hmm. but like board of directors and like uh ceos you have like everyone like directives mm -hmm. there were mostly guys mm -hmm. and that's when it gets like a little discouraging mm -hmm. it's like yeah maybe i can grow as much as i can mm -hmm. but you see like all all literally all guys and it's like maybe like it does it really matter how much like how hard i work mm -hmm. like can i get there because i don't see it you know mm -hmm. And that's like the other funny part because a lot of companies like to pray like, oh yeah, um, diversity, we're super inclusive, yeah, 50-50, but you don't really see it and, and the work like on the director's side as well. So mm -hmm. it's like, I think it's like, yeah, there's, there's this glass ceiling that at some point we are not able to grow as much as we can. And I think the world is changing and mm -hmm. I really hope for it to be changing. Uh, I hope I'm going to be part of the change with like all of the amazing women that are working on this industry, mm -hmm. but we are not there yet for sure. Okay. There's very few companies that, I, that I've seen that, that they're really that inclusive in that sense. Very so you, you feel like based on your experiences, maybe the last three companies or four companies that you've worked with most of the senior leadership team, like the C-level execs, are all men. Are all men, yeah. Okay. Um, and But you feel like we're going towards the right direction where I women... I feel so, yeah. Um, okay. Like even... I can see... Yeah, I see it. I see we're going like on a, on, on a, on a good path of like um, acknowledging. Okay. Um, I see... I see more girls getting hired and getting promotions and like, right. uh, you know, and that's like really exciting as well. I think like, yeah, we're in the right direction. I just don't think we're there yet. Mm -hmm. um, what is surprising to me is just, just because I'm in Canada. I mean, personally, like in Mexico, that's what, that's what we think. Like Canada is like the goal and everyone is like super inclusive and there's like zero racism <laughs> and zero sexism like that's the way we see it and mm -hmm. it's just, it was just really surprising to come here and see like oh it's not like that i mean it's, it's not that. all sun sunshine yeah. and roses yeah <laughs> like yeah. what happened here yeah <laughs> this is not what they promised me <laughs> you know um, hopefully it's a lot better than a lot of other places but, oh uh, of course it perfect. is like yeah. that's what i'm saying like it's yeah it's way better than mexico it is mexico is like it's it's another topic Mm -hmm. um but it's just like based on like my expectations mm -hmm. it was like really i was really surprised i was like oh it's not like that you still have to like work really hard and you still have to prove yourself and mm -hmm. not like only in like tech industries just in like every industry i was talking to one of like my good friends um she is from mexico as well she went um she had did the the master's degree with me and we're talking the other day and we were just talking about that like that this same conversation like it, that it's just really hard to come here because like in mexico we were someone and we had a lot of experience and we we had like good jobs and you know like we, we had something there we built something there mm -hmm. and we leave everything behind we come here and you still have to prove yourself because we're women and we're from mexico and it's it's twice as hard you know I think on that topic though, Carolina, I gotta play a little bit of devil's advocate here. And I'm not disagreeing with you, don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. Uh, you know, you you hold your own experiences and everything yeah. like that. I know for a fact, obviously my parents immigrated here yeah. 40 plus years ago and they're immigrants from Hong Kong and they had really high standing jobs. And when they got here, like, I think my dad was working as a, um, auditor by day for a small firm and he was like delivering pizzas at night like to yeah. pay for night schooling you know what i mean and my mom was like a secretary at a bank yeah um so they really had to like press the reset button and start from scratch not that that makes it right it is pretty unfortunate that there's a lot of there's a lot of people i actually meet in the hotel industry that are super educated like i I remember the uh, shipping and receiving guy when I yeah. did my internship in Toronto, he was a freaking neurosurgeon. 
and he would and he yeah he just you know he was in unfortunately i can't remember where he was from but he was in a a country where it was like a war-torn country he literally had to like escape with his kids because he was like there's civil war and we don't know if we're gonna die so we have to pack our bags and and go and he you know he got a job being a shipping and receiving manager you could just see the weight of the world on his shoulder because he was such a brilliant man he was so smart but he just couldn't operate in the medical field here right there's yeah. no way that he could have gone back to medical school and did his you know residency yeah, and everything. all that yeah. yeah to get recertified and everything like, he has mouths to feed right like he has a family to feed and yeah. stuff right so no, maybe i know i know i think i know where you're going yeah just being an immigrant it's just hard because you have to like start over and it's not yeah. only as woman yeah but it's still I, i'm not saying it's exclusive of like only us Mm -hmm. but you do have to add that up being but a you woman feel like there's another layer there yeah of course it is it's, it's like so immigrants like, and then yeah woman, of course it is yeah it's like <laughs> yeah. it's like being i don't want to get racial but like it's like being black in america mm -hmm. like if you're if you're if i'm like if i'm a woman and i'm like uh, down in america i know like a black woman is gonna suffer way more than i am because mm -hmm. she has like another layer of difficulty mm -hmm. you know I mean, like it's, it's like we have like layers i'm not saying like these experiences are like only for us like mm -hmm. i'm sure a lot of people go through it but it's just like there's like layers that of like difficulty and yes it is um that i mean that's that's what i believe mm -hmm. i mean that's my perspective and i appreciate your comment for sure like i do agree a lot of people go through that you you explain your parents as well yeah yeah but it's just it's just like an extra layer of like yeah i was not born a man so i have to like reprove myself you know um, <laughs> fair enough fair enough i can't speak to that because i i was born a man so, <laughs> because yeah. i'm not a girl <laughs> yeah i'm not a girl and then yeah i can't really i can't really talk about the trials and tribulations of that i'm, I'm yeah. sure i mean i have an older sister so i can imagine there's there's some very real things and there's some things that i'll never understand you know and yeah, she tells me that right that i'll yeah, never understand but uh what i do appreciate like uh from people like you is uh maybe you would never understand it but you're doing your best to at least listen thank uh, you which i i think that's like the most important part um of course you cannot understand it else unless you're like on our shoes and you become a woman magically of course <laughs> not um but it's just like people listening and like seeing that there's an issue that mm -hmm. helps and that's like towards change like uh, like i feel like for example being a i'm a super feminist for, by, by the way mm -hmm. but um i think i was i was talking to my mom about this the other day i was like uh, i feel like being like having like this feminist movement of old women mm -hmm. it's not enough we need men that are feminists as well and they're all these and help us like mm -hmm. grow you know so i really appreciate people that really talk about these topics and like they really do it to help us move forward and make the situation better for us, you know? So I do appreciate you like us having this conversation as well. I think like this is really important, a really important conversation, specifically like, where we work. Because mm -hmm. I know you've noticed as well. I know that's the reason you wanted to do it. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, well, I think it's a hot button topic. It's it's actually this probably segues into the next thing that I wanted to get your feedback on. So, um, you know, I'm not disagreeing with anything that you said, obviously, uh, throughout this conversation. One of the things that I want to tap into is really education. So, um, there's like maybe 11% of women in like computer science. And it's like predominantly dominated by men, right? Or like mechanical engineering or like other fields that might be a good segue from like a bachelor's into the world of like technology. Like, why do you think that is? Like, um, why do you think that women are predominantly not uh, interested in technology? Or are they interested and they're not given the opportunity, yeah. right? I mean, I think that's like a really hard question because <laughs> I'm going to tell you why, because I think mm -hmm. uh, the cultural background also really influenced 
yeah. like experience. I can talk from my experience what I think it happened with me being in Mexico when I was studying back there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what happened, it, it was like there were like labels. Mm -hmm. Like, and not, we don't even really talk about them. We just thought it was like that. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, for example, my brother, he's an engineer and he always kind of knew that he was going to be an engineer because mm -hmm. like what else was he was he was not going to work in communications like mm -hmm. he was not going to go it's not going to be a designer he's like i gotta be an engineer like somehow it was like in back of his mind and nobody told him that you know mm -hmm. he just kind of knew and i think for myself it was kind of similar like i i studied marketing i mean i loved it i'm not gonna say i didn't like it but it's just like i i, I never had like this idea of like oh i'm gonna I don't know, a mechanical engineer. Like, mm -hmm. I never, I didn't even have it on my, on the back of my head. It was like never a possibility for me. And you I think because like, into it. I think, yeah, it, I think it's because we just have these labels. Like, okay. there's careers that women are supposed to do that are like more feminine, mm -hmm. that fit more the profile of like a, a woman. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's, there are careers that fit more like a profile of like a, a male at the end of the day. Okay. I feel like that's my perspective from Mexico. I'm not sure. I think it's really hard to answer it um, from here because I don't really know. It's a very complex question, obviously. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm sure going to school in Mexico is very different than going to school yeah, here. And, and just culturally, I, I get it. I'm, I'm just curious about your perspective as because, you you know, you've obviously immigrated over here. You've been mm -hmm. here for a couple of years you've studied here as well so you've been in a very unique position to study yeah a, you know by uh, post-grad um mm -hmm. and then work in the industry to kind of see the full landscape of like cool what are the familiar faces around me like are they yeah. people of color are they women like are yeah, they yeah. promoted like those kind of things that's an interesting question um i mean but at the end of the day i studied business so i did mm -hmm. see a lot of women working mostly mm -hmm. women of color uh immigrants uh mm -hmm. but i'm not sure because i mean it's business i think business is kind of those careers that like are not like you wouldn't say like oh this is for a guy like you mm -hmm. know what i mean um so no I, I i don't i mean i think what i think it happens is like we just have like these labels of like more feminine or more masculine careers mm -hmm. And people just go towards them, not even, not even without like we don't even question it because it's been like that for a long time, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that's what happens. Um, but yeah, it's a complex question. I think like uh, experience, like if you ask someone from here, they might have like a different an answer, mm -hmm. they had different experiences, right? So, I think do you feel, I guess, culturally or even by your family or friends or whatever your social groups? that you were ever pushed into kind of like studying in a certain discipline, like uh, that would be predominantly female oriented, like I guess nursing, that's a stereotype, mm -hmm. but I'm just putting it as an example yeah. or like an accountant. Like I don't know a lot of accountants that are females. I know a lot of accounts that are males as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you feel that was ever the case for you? I know. <sighs> that's a really hard question. <laughs> I, I never thought about it. Uh, yeah. so. I'm just curious if, like, your parents yeah, ever push uh, you to be like, "Oh, Carolina, you know, like, just go do this." Never, or I don't think my friends or my parents, like, oh, fortunately, like, my parents um, are very open-minded um, mm -hmm. for Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very educated, so they were really more into like do whatever makes you happy. Mm -hmm. uh, they were always really like, "You gotta get like a degree, right?" Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> they're yeah. still Mexican parents and they want a degree, but uh, <laughs> but uh, they never really forced me like, oh, you have to do this. Um, no, I don't think uh, I did, or for my friends, not at all. I don't think that was at least my experience. But I'm pretty sure that's like the experience for a lot of people for sure. That's fascinating. Uh, that's very yeah. interesting because a I lot do, of. Sorry. I have an, uh, like an example. It's, it's a guy friend. Yeah. I have. Uh -huh. I'm going to switch it up, but like uh, he wanted to study this and he was one of my good friends back in Mexico. Um, his parents like didn't want it, like they didn't pay for, because um, they were going to help him pay for a school. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the end they backed up because he was just studying design. He's like, no, if you're going to do that, you cannot, you know? Mm. So I'm sure it's, yeah, I'm sure it's like experience for like a lot of people. But personally, I don't think I went through that. 
Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me, obviously, like you had a pretty supportive background. Um, yeah. Um, like with what you wanted to do or what you wanted to choose to do. Um, I know your father, if I'm not mistaken, is a very educated man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm sure that there. I'm. I don't know for this for a fact. I'm guessing there was at least some familial pressure to, at least go to university and study and do something. Oh yeah. 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 I think that's the one thing that it was like not an option. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, it was like I mean unless I just like run away or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it was like it was not even up for discussion. Like you will have to have a degree. But I think they do have like a good reason there. Um, mm -hmm. Because like if you uh, here you can find any job and I mean not have like a really great life with a lot of luxury, but you can mm -hmm. survive. Um, back there, if you don't have like a degree, you have you have like nothing to support you. No so job prospects. So if you don't study, yeah. you won't find a job and mm -hmm. you won't have money to live. So mm -hmm. I think that was where the pressure was coming, and also because my dad like he has like a freaking PhD, so. He's like really so school. So. Yeah, he's like school, 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 school. Like a yeah. lot of his life was involved yeah. in school. Yeah, no, I can, I can totally oh, understand. He that. was like super happy when I told him like, yeah, I'm gonna do my MBA. He's like, yeah, good. But then when I told him like, this is my last step. Like, I'm not studying yeah. anymore. I'm, I mean, not like PhD or anything. He was like a little bit sad on the inside. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I really wanted you to do it. <laughs> it's, it's very interesting because, um, you know, like my culture, like I'm Chinese. Um, you know, we have maybe five or six professions that like your parents want you to go into. Like they want you to be a doctor, they want you to be a lawyer, <laughs> uh, accountant, like uh, engineer. Um, yeah, that's, that's yeah, all that's I can it. really name right now. I guess those four, uh, you know, the odd occasion, maybe they'll let you be an architect. So there's like certain professions that are and it's for like face, you know what I mean, right? Like, I, I don't know if that's a big deal in Mexican culture, but it's like bragging rights, right? Like, oh yeah, you know, my yeah. son went to this school, or my daughter went to this school, and now is an MD or you know whatever yeah. that might yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's so the it's the, thing. yeah, for yeah, sure. it's it's kind of just it's a little bit twisted because it's kind of like vicariously living through your your children not to say that that's what happened to you but uh no <laughs> it's uh interesting if you knew anyone that kind of experienced that culture or that yeah no it is i, I think mexico is similar in that way um uh, uh, yeah like a doctor if you're a doctor it's like oh my my son is a doctor i remember my <laughs> grand my granddad um yeah. Like, uh, yeah, a lot of people like studied, like a lot of my uncles and aunts studied um, university, but the one he was a proudest, it was a doctor one. And he would mm -hmm. like talk about the doctor one to everyone. He's like, he's my son, the doctor. And I'm like, like you have like a guy that has like, I don't know how many companies, like when, like talk about that one. That one is like the one that has the money, you know? Mm -hmm. But it, yeah, it's just like a pride thing. And I think in Mexico works like that as well. Interesting. That's really interesting. <laughs> I want to circle back to obviously hiring, yeah. um, uh, you know, I have some experience with this. I'm sure that you have some experience with this as well. I think what's fascinating for me anyways, is I want to hire for diversification. Like I would, let me be clear, I guess to listeners, I want to hire the best person possible. First and foremost, I don't care if you're a man. I don't care if you're a woman. I don't care if you're uh, trans or part of the LGBTQ community. I don't care what color, creed, religion you're from. I want to hire the best person for the possible job. Yeah. But the reality is that um, you know, I won't name kind of what the company is. My current team is predominantly men, and I do want to hire more women. The thing is, when I look at the resumes, when we put in a job posting for Indeed or something like that, it is literally a ratio of like 20 men to like one one woman, right? Yeah. One applicant for a woman. And it's very hard. Like, even if I'm looking for some of that, like, okay, where, where are the female applicants and stuff like that? For that one female applicant to like have all the qualifications for this particular job and be that resume that really stands out, the probability becomes smaller and smaller if there's not enough of a pool applying for the job. Does that make sense? Yeah, but what do you think that happens? I, I know I, why. I personally don't. I I think, like, I welcome that. That's 
actually yeah. what I want feedback from you about to see it's, if we can make appropriate just, changes to make that more friendly, I guess, or, it, or whatever. It's, it's a little hard because I think it's like, it's just everything is a cycle. So um, more guys go to like better schools. And those guys, when they got graduate, they might get a better internship. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, they get a better job mm -hmm. and they get more experience. So it's just like a cycle. It's like they never, like even from the beginning, you don't get the same opportunity. So it's a little hard to catch up, you know? Okay. I think that's the main reason. It's really hard to catch up if you didn't have like the same opportunities at the beginning. So okay. I do, and I agree. I think at the end of the day, you should hire the best person. Person for the job, yeah. For the job. Because you want someone to do the job well, mm -hmm. and you're supposed to look at that, like no matter what. Yeah. But if you put it into perspective, it's like maybe this person doesn't have the resume, but that doesn't mean she doesn't have the qualifications. Right. You know, it's just I do believe it's it's just a cycle. Like from the beginning, maybe she didn't have the same opportunities, um, so she's not gonna have the same resume. Of course not. How how could she? You know. Mm -hmm. I think that's the main reason why like this keeps happening and but i understand it's like it's a it's, it's a really difficult topic because like coming back to it you want to hire the best person yeah at the end of the day. ultimately so it is a little bit hard but uh it, it's sad to see because like it's maybe it's a person that has like great uh, qualifications it's mm -hmm. not the best resume and like people keep saying her no you know right so i think what i would say there is like I, and we were talking about this like uh, previously like you can teach uh, someone how to like do the job yeah you cannot teach them um how to like be persistent mm -hmm. and you know like those like skills are more important at the end of the day like if they're hard workers if they don't give up and they're willing to learn mm -hmm. uh you know uh, those things are more, maybe they're more viable, valuable. Mm -hmm. So maybe don't reject them that up, like, you know, like that easily. Maybe, maybe have a conversation. Maybe you'll find that, that they can be like a really good fit, you know? I actually uh, try to emphasize interviewing uh, when I am going through the interview process. Yeah. I actually try to emphasize interviewing. Um, like, obviously, the best person for the job, but. Yeah. I am a little bit biased when I look out for more female uh, resumes um, than male ones, uh, yeah. maybe slightly. Um, and I do interview them. Like I, if if I like what I see on the resume, I'll, I'll yeah. uh, interview them. I just find that it's so few and far between. And maybe this is totally skewed because I'm in sales and yeah. it's like a different environment. I'm not sure. Um, but that's what I've noticed, honestly, for the like the last couple of years i just get so many more resumes it's not even close it's like the polar opposite yeah. like 90 percent men and then 10 percent women you know or something like mm -hmm. that yeah it's, it's unfortunate uh i know that i really depends on like um what do you do for work mm -hmm. but uh, i've seen that in sales as well like uh previous jobs for some reason it's like mostly guys uh mm -hmm. Specifically, on my, my last job as well, it was like, they didn't have like, not even one uh, salesperson from, that it was a woman, not even really? one, not even one. And uh, when I left, they did hire one, uh, which was like really surprising. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know specifically in sales, but I've never seen like a lot of women in the field. It's like a voice club kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> I hope it's not a boys club. I mean, I try not to make my environment a boys club. No, club, I know. But, um, yeah. but I, I think as long, like, this is like a hard question. Yeah, I, I know I've, I'm saying like this a bunch of times, but yeah, at the end of the day, you no, should like it's... just hire the person that is the best one that best fits the job and is like the best one. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important that you give the other people the opportunity knowing they didn't have the same the resources or the same opportunities. So as long as you're giving them the opportunity to like at least speak out, mm -hmm. um, I mean, if they match a little bit the job, because if it's someone that is like no experience, of course not. Like, no, what are you doing? Yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, I think like that's like the right step to go. Um, mm -hmm. That that's the best thing you can do. But at the end of the day, if 
you cannot find it. I mean, you can not do much, you know. You can yeah. try. As life as goes you on. I guess. Yeah, life goes on. Yeah. And you see, um, business needs to like keep going, and yeah. you need people to work. You know, you're not gonna wait until like you find the perfect woman like candidate yeah. comes no. by or whatever. And like, no, you yeah, cannot. Yeah. At the end of the day, business are businesses, and. Yeah. People still need to eat and get paid. So. Yeah, <laughs> business needs to keep running.、Um, I think for the last little part here, Caroline, I'd like to hear what maybe what you would hope for to see maybe in the tech industry for the next five or ten years. I know that's a very big question, but、yeah. uh, you know, in terms of like I don't know, growth opportunities, more women CEOs, you know, whatever. Yeah, I think what I would like to see is for like the companies that are already established,、mm-hmm. more women in directive positions.、Mm-hmm. I would love to see that.、Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like as I as I said previously, I see a lot of like yeah, there's a, bro- a broad、uh, path、uh, that is like yeah, you become a manager and you become this and that, but it's like it stops at some point. I really want like that literally, literally that thing to break. Mm-hmm. So like you can see that, and I think like when that starts to happen, it just becomes really inspiring to other women. You know, like a lot of people don't even want to work in this industry because they think it's hard and it's like sexist and it's、mm-hmm. you know. So I think that's really going to inspire other women to join the industry or try it and just do what they love, you know, and work hard. Uh, I would love to see more women CEOs in general.、Mm-hmm. There's like barely. Yeah, Man, um, like it's it's incredible to see that.、Um, I think、uh, women, like women in leadership, work really, really different,、uh, and it's、yeah. just really it's amazing to see results.、Uh, the way they work,、uh, the way the way they lead their teams as well, it's totally different. So I would love to see that more, just like more more women in leadership,、um, just. Taking over the world. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. That's yeah, that's that's my hope. And as I said, I think we're like on the right path.、Um, I, I mean, specifically where where we work、uh, on like the marketing、uh, mm-hmm. area. Yeah, there's a lot of women, and、mm-hmm. they keep hiring more women, and that's really exciting. And personally, I'm seeing it like right now, like more. More managers and like my friends getting promoted and like and you know like I see that we're going in the right direction. I just、mm-hmm. don't think we're there yet, and we just need people to understand and to like just become. Because I I think like the worst part about like not like the, that a problem exists is like people don't don't even know it exists, you know.、Mm-hmm. So as long as like we keep the conversation, like people know what's happening. I think that's where we can like start changing things, you know, like having like this type of conversations, like you and I are having, because like it's incredible, like how many men are clueless and they have no idea this exists, you know. It's like、But、this is happening and how bad it is. Yeah. Because, because why, like, why would they, you know? Because it doesn't affect them, but it's, you know, it's nice to see like some people are really interested and like they want to be part of the change,、mm-hmm. and like yeah, as I said, like these little conversations really help. I was like towards moving forward and getting somewhere. Objectively speaking,、uh, yeah. as objective as you can be about the situation, <laughs>、um, like given the current landscape with jobs and everything like that, and women in tech, do you think companies are like they're trying, like they're trying harder to be more inclusive of not just women, people of color? Or, You know that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, I do. I、okay. do. They're trying, but I don't think that all companies are doing for like the right reasons. The right reasons. Yeah. I think、um, a lot of companies are just doing it for because、um, they're afraid to get canceled. Yeah. You know? <laughs> And I mean, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad they're trying and they're doing it, but it、yeah. sucks that it's not for the right reasons. You know.、Um, but I do feel like there's like a lot of pressure in society nowadays to like. Just be as inclusive as you can. So there's、yeah. a lot, and that actually could be a podcast of a whole other magnitude. Oh yeah,、uh, I agree. The, <laughs> you know how genuine you know some companies are. I remember I won't name the company, obviously, but、uh, you know I had a friend telling me that、uh, this this particular company、uh, for for Black History Month.、Um, 
like they had like a Twitter post, I guess, on their company uh, Twitter, like every single day. And like, it was just for that month. And honestly, every other day in the rest of the year, like nothing, right? Like nothing about any kind of like multiculturalism or achievements yeah. or anything like that. Um, so it's very, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's the same way I, I do feel a little, uh, somewhat a little bit of that, like, um, like lately because of like COVID, there's been a lot of emphasis on, um, uh, like Asian discrimination and harassment and assault and all those kind of things. And then, you know, sometimes you see companies featuring a lot of more, you know, Asian yeah, American, Asian Canadian, yeah, like faces on their ads and they're, you know, like a group of people, like you have to have that yeah. token Asian person kind of like on this TV yeah. show, you know, or whatever. That's the thing. So. Like, you don't want to be the token in that. Like, um, in one of the first companies I worked, like, I'm glad you talked about it. Mm -hmm. They were really insistent on how much they wanted to hire girls. Like they were insisting and insisting. I think there were like, I'm not kidding. There were like 60 people working there. There were only like five women there, like five, wow. you know, out of 60. And wow. they kept like, oh yeah, we gotta like hire women, blah, blah, blah. But they would never hire. And then, I don't know, investors would come in and they would be like, oh, girls introduce yourself. I'm like, like I'm. Why? Why are you doing this? Because like I'm your token girl in the company, yeah. like, you know, like it's the not, it's not okay. <laughs> like I do a good job, like but don't do this, you know. Like, and then you complain all like all year that oh we don't have like enough, in like we're not being that inclusive. We need women working here, and they don't hire women. They always hire like male. I I know this is a very touchy subject, like affirmative yeah. action, like hiring for color, like quotas and stuff like that. But personally to me, if I was hired simply because of the fact of my, the color of my skin uh, and not from the merits of my skill, experience, like those kind of things, I'd be actually really offended. Like that's oh, just, yeah. yeah, that's just my personal opinion. Like I know I have, I guess like a conceivable like societal leg up from yeah. everyone because it's like, okay, we have to fill our Asian quota now. But can you imagine that, right? Like. I, wouldn't you be offended by that? I would be super offended. Of course, by that. it's yeah, it's super, it's it's extremely offensive. Yeah, because it's like yeah, you're here like working your ass off, and they just think you're like a like a pretty picture. So people think like you're an inclusive company. Like no, that's not okay. But like that being said, like at least like my experiences right now, like a few of the companies that were worked like recently, they're like really into hiring the best people and just mm -hmm. it came up to like the best people is like a really like a like a super inclusive group mm -hmm. uh, or groups and, and like this couple of companies uh which is great uh i see like a lot of companies really trying and just like hiring for the best mm -hmm. um and yeah at the end of the day when you look for the best you will you will find like yeah a lot of people, like not only one like as, as we said like people from other countries um mm -hmm. nowadays with like uh with covid and everything that you can work from home you, you can hire someone like i don't know mm -hmm from freaking Italy, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just like this diversity just like helps companies grow and be better. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like, especially specifically I feel like new companies, um, they do like really work to like hire the best people mm -hmm. and they're not very biased. I might be wrong. I just, that's that might be my perspective. I feel like older companies are the ones that really want like these token people. Yeah. And that the ones that make, like, I don't, I don't know, like, a, I have like a big like memory of like Coca Cola saying like oh we do the best to like be as inclusive and you're like that's like that's not true you know <laughs> <laughs> like stop I know you're lying yeah. so, <laughs> yeah. I feel like newer companies uh, and it's just like newer companies with like younger people like mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to be ageist but mm -hmm. like younger people would like they're just built different you know they really want change and they really see the world from a different perspective and they don't really care about like these things. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's, that's really what, what's going to change um, where we go from now. I'm not saying like, I, I know it's not a bad, I didn't want it to be ages, but like, I do feel like younger generations are really like, like Gen Z, they're crazy. 
<laughs> they're crazy, but they're they're really making changes. You know, it's like it's really amazing to see. Mm -hmm. So I think like yeah, that's the other thing that I think that it, it's gonna make the changes. Yeah, younger generations, um, they're gonna take us there. They're probably being a lot more progressive than my generation. Yeah, of course. Of yeah. Course. yeah. Um, and they're really not settling for the status quo. Um, yeah. Like you can see, yeah. obviously, a lot of the climate change stuff. Like they're striking every day, <laughs> and they're they're clamoring up about things that they're not happy with. Which you know, rightfully so. I, I understand <laughs> it, right? Like I I do feel for them, right? Like they they need to look out for what's going to happen to them in the next. 20 40 years right in, oh, in their lifetimes and stuff yeah so i think even for me like the world is not like a really easy world to me but like yeah yeah but uh yeah thank mm -hmm. you awesome um last thing that i wanted it, it, is there anything else that you wanted to throw in there your two cents or that you want to mention uh, you forgot to mention I'm not sure i don't think we really touched about like uh uh difference and the like the pay gap i think that does uh -huh. exist the i do think it, yeah i think it does exist as well not only like a woman in tech just like in general which i'm just gonna throw it out there we still we need to do better as well and just pay according to just as we hire as well you hire mm -hmm. the best person just pay according to um your knowledge and your experience and i don't think a lot of people do that uh, have you experienced this yourself uh yeah in the past i did yeah okay okay and it was very evident like uh, yeah it was your male really counterpart ever. was yeah so there were the two options it was either it was either because i was either mexican or i was a woman because i couldn't find like any other or maybe both <laughs> or maybe <laughs> both yeah maybe both, yeah. Maybe yeah. both. I, I don't know but it was like it was such a huge difference like right it was not like like a tiny like because i like, you know like a tiny thing like yeah okay i'm not gonna fight for like a couple bucks mm -hmm. but it was like so monumental mm -hmm. it was yeah it was really upsetting and it was like the and the worst part is i had like more experience with that person mm -hmm. i had like more time on the company as well mm -hmm. so yeah i, I do I don't think I was asking for much. I just, I, I was asking for what is, it was fair. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't even asking for it was fair. I was going way low. They, I was low balling myself. <laughs> Which is always sad to hear. Yeah. yeah, it's really sad. It's sad to and hear. And that's like, it's something that I learned from that experience. I would never do that to myself again, mm -hmm. ever. No, like that, I do regret doing that because I was enabling, you know, that, that behavior just saying like well at least give me this and they still say no yeah. like i would never do that again because right. if you're good you're good if you're a hard worker that's good um uh, i understand that when you like when you start a job you have to prove yourself but like if you have proven yourself they know how you work and they're not giving you like even the same yeah you know that's, that's i do the thing and, uh, that i want to throw in there <laughs> we well no i mean we could talk about that for hours to be honest yeah with you. yeah and we ha and we have and um and that could be honestly another episode uh for everything that's going on i i think i i think what i will say for any listeners that are listening please remember that if you are working for a company that treats you that way they're not the only company in the world guys yeah. like i know it might feel like that at the current moment because i have bills to pay i have kids to support i have you know i have to feed myself whatever you're going through i have student loans i have to pay off but i promise you like carolina mentioned if you are skilled you are experienced you have a proven track record of that you can find yeah. work somewhere else and actually that was something that you told me when i got like um I recently got a job and uh, thankfully it's, it's, it's a great job. It's a great opportunity uh, with great people. Mm -hmm. so I'm really thankful for that. But when I got it, I, I remember you told me like, uh, I hope you know, like the experiences that you've been through is not like that everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure I, I know you find like a really good place to work. Uh, and you told me that I really remember that. It was like, yeah, I know. Um, so it was, it was, I just remember it because you were, you <laughs> <laughs> you were <laughs> you were just giving like a lot of um, advice in that area 
Or hopefully, like, hopefully I didn't sound too preachy and I was giving you some good advice there. You sounded like, um, I don't know, it sounded good. Mo motivational like a, speaker? I don't know, like a worried <laughs> that or something. <laughs> Yeah, it's from years of experience and failing. Yeah. That's, that's why I know that for sure. But yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, you know, listeners at home, please be encouraged uh, that if you're in a rough situation, um, please remember that you are worth it. You can find a job somewhere else. There's a lot of people hiring. In fact, right now is probably the best time ever for it's an employee's market. It doesn't yeah. come around that often, but a lot of employers are starving for good help because a lot of people are reconsidering their options. They're obviously not putting up with uh, SHIT. Um, and yeah, like you you can go out there and, and, and find something. And I can't promise that for everyone, but I, I think that you know you, you need to have some of that confidence and, and at least try. Things um, will get so better eventually. Things will get better. So Absolutely. Hang on in there. <laughs> I went through like a lot of tough times here, talking yeah. for experience. <laughs> Things get better, I promise. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, awesome. Is there anything else that you wanted to include, Carolina, before? No, we wrap this up? that was pretty much it. I just okay. had it here. I needed to like take it. <laughs> you need to say that. <laughs> it was <up> my chest. <laughs> I would love for you to come back on another podcast so that we can discuss that. Uh, I think that would actually be a great discussion topic, um, which would be which would be amazing. Uh, we yeah. could honestly do a deep dive into into pay um, and employer shortchanging. <laughs> love to come <laughs> back whenever you want to invite me. Thank you. I'm Thank you. Uh, Caroline, thank you obviously so much for giving me your perspective on everything today. Um, I, you know, I really appreciate it. I'm sure listeners really appreciate it as well, especially women of color that are aspiring to, to get into tech uh, and, and kind of understanding the landscape. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I'm just going to close up this podcast here. Um, so thank you very much, uh, all listeners, uh, for tuning in. If you tune in on YouTube, please, uh, like, comment, subscribe. If you haven't already ring that notification bell, I'd love to hear the comments below on your kind of work related experiences, gender pay gap stuff, affirmative action, uh, your experience in tech, even in the hiring process. And, you know, if you can relate to some of the stuff that Carolina and I have been through, if you're listening, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, and Amazon music. Uh, we're always there. We publish podcasts every Wednesday and you'll find us every Monday and Wednesday publishing episodes and every other Friday is a Q and A. So please stay tuned for that. And this is TRG signing off on our podcast. Thank you so much. And we'll see you guys next week. Thank you.